Hi guys, let's have a look at the Further Pure Maths FP3 OCR June 2012 paper, question 6. Now the question says the variables x and y satisfy the differential equation d2y by dx squared plus 4dy by dx equals 12e to the 2x. And our job is to find the general solution to this differential equation. If you remember, a general solution is made up of a particular solution and the complementary function. Now the complementary function is effectively, I say, our big plus C. It's a function that you can put into this equation, this differential equation, and get zero. Hence, it will not affect the result. We can add it onto the end of our particular answer and it isn't going to change it. Hence, to have a full solution, we need that too. So, let's get on with the job at hand. To find the complementary function, we need to first investigate the auxiliary equation, which is lambda squared plus 4 lambda equals 0. You can see that we've just put lambda squared d2y by dx squared and lambda for dy by dx. Okay, this is our trick to find our solutions. So, this is set equal to zero, and we can factorize lambda, lambda plus four equals zero. So we get the two solutions that lambda equals zero, or lambda equals minus four. Now, if you remember, we use the general solution. If you remember, we use the formula that y equals a e to the alpha x plus b e to the beta x, where alpha and beta are our two solutions. Okay. Now, e to the zero is going to give us one. So our complementary function is going to be a plus b e to minus 4x. Okay. Now, we need to get on with finding the particular solution. The way we do that is we guess a function that we think is going to simplify this equation. Now, if we look at this side, we're left over with 12 e to the 2x. So, I suspect it's going to have something to do with e to the 2x. Now, we do not know about the constant in front, so let's make up a constant and call it, I don't know, d. So, using that solution, if we find dy by dx and d2y by dx squared, we can substitute into our differential equation and see what value d is going to make this work. So, dy by dx differentiating gives us 2d e to 2x and differentiating again d2y by dx squared gives us 4d e to 2x so let's substitute our values in to the differential equation we've got d2y by dx squared 4d e to 2x and we've got 4dy by dx which gives us 8d e to 2x and this equals 12 e to 2x and if you notice the way this works is if d equals 1 So we have a solution for y that works, y equals e to the 2x. We have our complementary function, which I said was kind of equivalent to our big plus c. And this gives a general solution. Okay. The equation that we found from part one 
represents a family of possible curves that satisfy the given differential equation. In part two, it is given that the curve which represents a particular solution of the differential equation has gradient six when x equals zero. This is called a boundary condition. It is also given that y equals e to two x when x is large and positive. So when we're talking about gradient, we're talking about dy by dx. So if we differentiate, we get 2e to 2x minus 4b e to minus 4x. And the first boundary condition tells us that this equals 6 when x equals 0. So if we substitute the values in now, you could write this on the next line of your working out. So x is 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1, so we're given that 2 minus 4b equals 6, and hence b equals minus 1. So we found this unknown, b is minus 1. Now, the second boundary condition tells us that y equals e to 2x when x is large. So e to 2x plus a minus e to minus 4x. Now if we imagine x getting really big, in the first term it's going to give us e to 2x and that is what we're hoping to approximate. In the final term We've got a negative power, which means we're going to be having 1 over e to the 4x, with x being really large. Now, when we're dividing by a really large number, our value is going to get very small, which means that this final term is going to tend to 0. And hence, we're left with y equals e to 2x plus a. Now, remember... Our boundary condition says it's approximating to e to 2x. Therefore, a must be 0, which gives our final solution that y equals e to the 2x minus e to the minus 4x. I hope this has been useful. If there's any questions, feel free to write a comment on the video.